So the question is, do snakes actually hear you? Now we know they don't, they don't have eardrums and they don't pick up sound in that sense, but they pick up vibration in different ways than for say we would. So stay tuned. I got something to show you. My name's Joe. You're watching the Warriors Presents. So what I wanted to show you was that I have, an, I have one snake, one of my male albino lavender golden child sunfires. Um, I have roughly about 18 snakes. And this guy, I've had him since he was about a month and a half old. Um, and I've always worked with him and he's always been very docile and everything. And one day when getting ready to feed my snakes, um, I mentioned his name and when I mentioned his name he turned around and I was really kind of surprised because I've always understood and I've always believed that snakes can't actually hear you sense of vibration when you move or you pull out a drawer or something along those lines all right but when I said his name he turned around it was the only one in the stack of cages because I have a front facing with five glass uh, sliding glass doors so there's a five stack he turned around and over the course of time he'd turn around again and again and so um, I mentioned it to a couple of people I saw things on online where people were discussing well snakes can't hear you and snakes don't have this and that and I kind of always just listen because a lot of people always get really hard and start criticizing anyone else's thoughts that goes out of the status quo which in my opinion is bullshit because people experience things on a different level all the time. And if you're always expecting just a certain amount of results, you're always going to get just those results. People that look outside of that, get things outside of that. And so I want to show you this video. It's very interesting. And, uh, you know, you make up your mind. So, um, he's about a year and a half old and he was breeding a lemon glow female and he'd been in there and every, I take him out about every three or four days and feed him, offer him food. And after about two, three days, I put him back in, uh, two, three days after the meal, I'll put him back in with the female. So, um, I came home from work that night. That was the night I was going to pull him out, feed him and put him back in a couple days later. And I opened the door, opened the, sorry, slide the glass open. And I start calling him. So the cage is clean. It's vibrant. You can see in there very well. And, uh, well, watch the video here. Come on, Kai. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Good boy. Come on. Come on, Kai. Good boy. Come on, Kai. Kai, come on, Kai. I'll see if getting nestled back in instead. <clears throat> Kai, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on. Now, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's try from the side. Kai, come on, Kai. Kai, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, Kai. Let's go. 
Now you can clearly see from the video as I'm talking to him, he responds. He, he acknowledges that I'm calling him. He doesn't really want to come forward because he's in there with a female. And um, so, but he hears me. He hears my voice or whether he's picking up my vibration that you want to say. And he recognizes that vibration. He acknowledges it and he snuggles in with the female instead of actually coming out towards me. So I let him sit for the night in the morning and I come back again. And here's what you're going to see. Now, at this point, I go to open the, I slide open the left hand side of the cage glass and I hit the record button and I'm trying to call him over and I realize that I haven't hit the record button, I actually hit just a picture. So at this point, I had to stop it. And the next video here, which you'll see, is me calling him over. He's responded to me. There's two nuggets in there right next to the female because someone did something over the course of the night after locking up and... I don't know, it's just weird. Sometimes they crap before they lock up and she does it before she locks up. I don't know if that's normal or not because I've never had it happen. And I've never bred retics before, but she seems to let loose a little bit right before she goes. Not pissing on him, but she opens up and there he goes. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, you'll notice that he comes over. Now, remember, he's off food. This guy has been breeding and he's had several locks already for several hours half of a day, whatever you want to call it. It's been long. But the thing about it is that he's off food, so he's not coming to me for food. And he's also not coming towards me uh, out of male aggressiveness because he's a breeding male. Because the minute he gets into my hands, he's puppy dog tame. And this is how he's always been ever since I've had him. So even though he's breeding, he hasn't really gone into that same mode as like my orange ghost stripe which is immediately aggressive towards me or anything else it, it's another male and i think he's finally coming there he comes good boy come on kai kai come on kai over here Kai, Kai, come on, Kai. And see, this is how I know he hears me. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> Let's see, he hasn't seen me. Come on, Kai. Okay, over here. Over here, come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good my boy. Come on. Good boy, Kai. Good boy. Come on. Come on, Kai. Good boy, Kai. Good boy. Good boy. All right, so I'm going to get him out. He is shitting. So now that you've watched that, I mean, you can make up your mind on how you feel about it, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but what I've noticed is that um, how do snakes really pick up a vibration? How do they hear it? How does it sound to them? Well, if you hum just on the, on the end of your lips, you know, hmm, it makes a sound. But if you take that hum and you put it deeper, like in between your ears, the vibration goes inside to your like where your skeletal will pick it up and it sounds like you hear something on the inside of you which to me i'm thinking he's recognizing that along with well when i'm calling his name and i'm calling him he's recognizing that vibration in a certain sense and he, he will come he'll turn around he'll come funny to say though is after he's been breeding i took him out and he started pushing and he's kind of busted up his lip a little bit and so I've had to go ahead and um, treat that, treat the wound, because one side was swollen. And um, so treating that with um, peroxide, uh, a Q-tip, and just go ahead and apply it to the area. And the, the sad part about it is this, is I call him out and he comes to me and then I have to apply that to him and he doesn't, he hates it. 
So after the, about the fourth or fifth time, now when he sees me, he opens up his mouth. And so I don't know if I've ruined the relationship, but I'm hoping that as soon as he, cause he's healing now and his, his mouth is looking really good. And it's almost hundred percent back to normal. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, he'll just pick up where he left off and he'll still call, come back out when I call him because the last time he did, but he was actually a little upset and that's when he started opening his mouth at me and he didn't strike, but he just opened, you know, that, that when you open their mouth and they're basically letting you know to stay away from them. That, and besides the fact that he shit on my back, um, which he's never done before. So I never got sprayed either by him, but that was the first time. And so anyways, um, like the video, uh, subscribe if you can, please. Um, and thank you for watching.